Thank you. Astos, over to you. Uh, please share your screen. If, if any challenges, let me know. I'm in the call. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. And uh, yeah, let me uh, try to share my screen. Uh, please confirm uh, if I'm uh, if the screen is visible to everyone. Screen is visible. Ashutos, your voice is slightly low. Not sure if it is for all or for me only, but but I still believe yeah, that your voice is a bit faint. Uh, yeah. yeah. Let me try changing it. Give me a minute. Let me try changing yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, is this a better one? Is this voice? Mm -hmm. Still, still, it is faint. Can you be closer to the speaker? Okay. Give me a minute. Uh, let me know if uh, this is better. Is this better? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because, let's go ahead, Astros. Yeah, yeah, because what I've done is now I have plugged in the headphones. So mm -hmm. hopefully this should be a better experience. So let me know if this is better than... Yeah, now, now it is better. Okay, it's it's better. definitely better, Ashutosh. Okay, yeah. okay, great, great. So good morning, everyone. Thanks uh, for joining on a Sunday morning. Um, I never expected... I think probably first time in my career I'm delivering a webinar on a Sunday morning. I mean, I have delivered so many webinars, but um, a Sunday morning is... Um, what um, I have been told is that um, it is a family time applies to you as well as to me. But nevertheless, I'm sure it will be an exciting experience. Um, I'm sure there will be a lot of uh, learning which we will get along the way. And um, I'm going to talk about digital transformation. Um, and first of all, thanks to PMI PCC for giving me an opportunity to speak on this topic. Uh, this is a topic which is, um, I think we all know about it. I mean, even um, I was thinking twice whether I should give this topic uh, for the webinar. Well, I think today everyone, every one of us is aware what digital transformation is, how digital transformation has impacted each of our lives. But nevertheless, I thought that um, maybe I can take a risk. It is Sunday morning, so uh, nothing um, is going to happen even if um, the topic is not something which excites people. But I'm sure um, I've tried to make it a little more interesting. I've tried to put in information which um, we know, definitely we know all what I'm going to cover but something which um, will provoke um, the thought process. The whole idea is that um, it should provoke a thought process and uh, it should result in we doing digital transformation in a better way. So that's the whole intention of um, having this topic on a Sunday morning. Now, whatever images you're going to see in this, um, and this is one change which I brought in my webinars, um, I've started using AI uh, a lot. So whatever images you are going to see, they all have been generated by using an AI tool, a Gen AI tool. Uh, mostly Copilot is the tool which I use for generating these images. So that's the change which I have brought um, in, my, um, in my presentation nowadays, that I try to bring in um, leverage in the elements from Gen AI. Because as we know, right, even as speakers, we have to evolve. Uh, Gen AI is something which is impacting everyone in life today, right? Whether you're a shop floor worker, whether you're a CEO, whether you are a coach, whether you are a mentor, or whether you are a consultant, or for that matter, project manager, Gen AI is something which is here to stay and uh, which is going to impact. So why not um, start learning it? And I consider it as a learning opportunity. So the images, what you see today might be very, very crude. And um, really to blame my prompt engineering skills for that, if at all the images don't appeal to you. But again, as we all are in the journey of learning, this is something I'm pretty sure will improve as we move along. All right. So on that note, let us start with um, uh, what what exactly uh, I want to convey. I want to talk about what I call it as a pick uh, model. Uh, this is something which I have experienced. This is something which um, I have leveraged uh, very effectively. And um, I'll be talking about what the pick way of um, navigating the journey through digital transformation is all about. So let us understand this. Some um, very contextual example from Hyderabad since I'm uh, delivering this talk for PMI PCC. Uh, this is something I found at an Hyderabad airport, right? Um, and um, I'm sure this video was a very viral video. It came across um, the entire world. This was there. And I'm sure many of you would have experienced this already. So in Hyderabad airport, when you go, right, you don't have to stand in a queue for dropping your bag. You don't have to wait in the queue at the airport check-in counter. There are baggage drop machines which are there. All you have to do is you have to scan your boarding pass. 
it will detect that um, you are so and so and um, uh, based on that based on that you have to just enter the number of back pieces you have to check in into that flight all you have to do is you have to um, put the bag on that um, um, travel letter which is there and the travel letter will scan the bag and it, it will generate a baggage tag for you all you do is you draw, drop in the bag and you go for a security check this is something uh, which I found at Hyderabad airport during my last uh, visit, which was there. Of course, it is being introduced across multiple airports. By the time I'm saying this in this webinar, uh, this could have been introduced in other airports also. Basically, the big ones like Bangalore, New Delhi or Chennai for that matter. Right. The second thing interesting I saw, and this I have not seen anywhere else so far, is a digital trolley. So this digital trolley is a very interesting trolley. OK, if you go, if you pick up this trolley, it will tell you your flight gate, where exactly your flight is um, there. It will give you an entire, um, I would say, an itinerary of flights which are departing, flights uh, whose security check has started, or flights um, who actually are um, having a kind of a last show, right? Or last and a final boarding card, it will give you. It will also give you the distance from where you are to the gate where you want to travel. And it has got a lot of interesting information into it. It has got information about uh, the Karachi biscuit counter at the airport, where exactly it is. It has got an information of Jeepulla Reddy Sweet Shop, uh, where it is located and what floor it is located. So that is the real time use case of digital transformation. I always say that whatever transformation you are doing, it has to impact each and every human being. Right. Um, and it's not just at airports. I mean, I've taken the example of airport because this is something which I have experienced. But I've also experienced some um, digital transformation at Mumbai local train, wherein you can actually book a ticket. Uh, a phys without actually standing in a queue for 20 minutes. So on an average, it takes 20 minutes at any station in Mumbai um, suburban system to book a ticket of 5 rupees. It's just a 5 rupees or a 20 or a, uh, it's one of the most subsidized systems in the world, by the way. Uh, so for a 40 rupees ticket uh, to travel 50 kilometers, you have to stand in a queue for 20 minutes. The kind of transformation they have brought out at uh, stations, the digital transformation I'm saying, is uh, humongous. I mean, you can't really imagine on that, right? Uh, so that is the power of digital transformation when it impacts people at the ground level, when it impacts people, when it imp impacts the entire 1.4 billion population of this country. That is the power of digital transformation we need to understand. And I'm not even talking about things like UPI and all. Yes, that is um, something which I will talk about it um, as we go along. So by this time, I think you would have realized that in this session, since I'm doing it for um, Hyderabad, um, the PMI PCC Hyderabad, uh, my examples would be more aligned with the Indian ecosystem. Rather, I thought that uh, rather than taking global examples, I should be taking examples more from an Indian ecosystem because that is what resonates well with all of us. That is what is going to help us understand the power of digital transformation and the kind of um, future we see leveraging digital transformation. Does it mean that um, in airport the digital transformation is over? No. Today, also, if you see in any airport, there are two, three, um, I would say, dislocated systems which are there. For example, you have a Digi Yatra by which you enter the airport. Then there is this baggage screening system. And then there is this digital trolley, trolley, right? Can these three systems integrated? Absolutely, why not? You can integrate these three systems. In fact, what I heard very recently, or rather I read recently in newspaper was that uh, in next three to four years, you actually would not need to carry, um, I mean, uh, you won't need to actually open your bags for um, hand baggage for security check-in. They are going to come out with mechanism where you don't have to actually um, open the bags. Like now, nowadays, nowadays, when you go to an airport, you have to remove your belt, you have to remove your wallet, you have to remove your watches, right? Um, any gold chain you're wearing, you have to keep it inside, right? So that it doesn't get detected by the metal detector. All that is going to be a thing of the past. That is the level of transformation what um, is being planned at an airport. And the same thing obviously is being getting applied at Indian Railways. It is getting applied at even at your at TS, TSRTC bus, the kind of digital transformation they are doing. It is humongous. So there's a huge opportunity. The whole intent of saying this is that there's a huge opportunity in the field of uh, digital transformation. So whosoever uh, we are working with, um, uh, try to see an opportunity for a digital transformation, which is coming up your way. All right, moving ahead. One very fundamental difference we all need to understand, and this is something we confuse. There are two words which are used interchangeably, but they are different. There is something called as transition. There is something called as transformation. There is a difference between the two words. Can anyone tell me what is the difference between transition and transformation? 
what do you think is the key difference between transition forget digital word what is transition and what is transformation in a layman's language anyone wants to quickly um, mute, chime in and talk about it transition versus transformation because as i said we transformation these... means converting something into a new level which mm -hmm. is not exist moving to a new level transition okay. means we moving the environment from existing to the another one mm -hmm. okay so transition means change of just environment probably that is a transition transformation means you're completely revamping it you're completely re-engineering that experience and i'm not using the word product here i'm using the word experience here that is more important product is just a vehicle to have that experience similarly service is just a vehicle to get that experience so let me explain <clears throat> I'm sure all of us have visited passport office. The kind of transformation it, it has undergone. It's a service. Trans service is a mechanism. It is not a product there. It's a service, right? You go to a passport office, you take an appointment. And believe me, in majority of the cases today, within one hour, in fact, one hour also is a bigger time, I'm saying, one hour after your um, entire process is completed, you would start receiving SMSs that what is the status of your passport? Has it gone for printing? Has it been printed? Has it been um, compiled into an envelope? And has it been sent by the postal department in speed post? All those thing messages start coming in. If your case is, case is a clean case, that is a transformation what I'm saying. A product or a service is just a vehicle to achieve that transformation. Unfortunately, we focus too much on product and service. I'm not saying it is not important. It is important. But what is important is that bigger goal what is there is transformation and the picture which came to my mind was this cat looking into a mirror and the cat is thinking herself to be of a um, uh, stature of a lion that is a transformation what we bring about and there are multiple levers of transformation when we talk about digital transformation it is a transformation which is to revamp the business it is a transformation to revamp the processes what you have the internal and the external processes what you have it is a transformation to lever the mindset of the people that um, is that is the essence of your digital transformation. So if you draw three circles and a popular Venn diagram, <clears throat> your digital transformation is a combination of your business transformation, your process transformation, and your people transformation. Even if one of them is missing, your entire transformation will collapse under the weight. It won't be a successful transformation. It won't be a sustainable transformation. So that is the critical lever. Right. And um, there's a very famous book. I'm sure many of you would have read this already. This famous equation, which um, is there in this book, um, Atomic Habits by James Clear, where he says that in order to do transformation, you don't need to do big things. You can do small, small things on a daily basis. So even if you take a vow as a people, as a person, as an organization or as a process vow, that I will make the processes, I will make my business or I will make myself one percent better every day. Look at the kind of magnifying effect it has. So there's a very famous equation he talks about 1.01 raised to 345 and 0.99 raised to 365. As we know, 1 raised to 365 is going to be 1 only. But 1.01 1 raised, 1 .01 raised to 365, that will be the power of compounding what you will get. That is the kind of a compounding effect you're likely to get. 30, Almost 38 times of effect what you will get. On the other hand, if you're decrementing yourself by 1%, this is the kind of um, diminishing effect what will come out of it. So um, every leader, every leader today needs to understand this power of transformation that don't go in a big bang approach. Try to implement incremental steps. Try to implement small, small baby steps at a time and uh, then see the power of transformation. Of course, you should have goals. You should have short term goals. You should have medium term goals. You should have long term goals in that horizon. As they say, right, Rome was not built in a day. It took ages, it took um, millions of years to build um, what a city is. Similarly, transformation is a uh, is a, not a, something which you can say zero or one. It is somewhere lying in between and it's an incremental process what we need to remember, right? And at the same time, um, there will be a lot of transitions in between. Your transformation journey, I'm not discounting transition completely. There will be a lot of transitions which will be happening in between in that journey of a transformation. All right, moving ahead. Let's uh, further understand this. So one thing, so in general, transformations are irreversible, right? Uh, 
is it true in this uh, uh, in the present world as well yeah, uh, with respect to the process and uh, business transformations are um, i would say transformations are reversible i'll take it in a different way transformations um, change in form or content now whether it is we call it as a reversible or not it's a different story but um, it is essentially related to what i say they change in form and content they may not be irreversible completely. You might want to irreverse it. Why not? I mean, um, if the political situation of the country does um, becomes unstable, obviously transformations do um, uh, go back. You go do go back to the old ages, right? That happens many times, right? If the infrastructure collapses, you do go back to the old stages. For example, um, there was this issue which happened, right? Crowd strike. On that day in India, if you would have been in an airport, you would have thought that you are in 80s because they were issuing uh, uh, written boarding cards. They were issuing handwritten boarding cards because of crowd strike. So imagine that situation to extend for a longer period. In those cases, your transformations might go in for a temporary irreversible, uh, I mean, temporary reversed phase. That is how I would put it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, some very, very basic definition of digital transformation. I'm not spending too much time on this slide, but um, just to highlight some very, very important element. Anything which fundamentally challenges, more than changes, I would say the fundamentally challenges the way you operate and the way you deliver value to the customer. That is the power of digital transformation. So it's an integration. It's an integration of digitization or the digital technology into business. But it is not just digital technology and business, as I said. The people dimension also plays a very, very vital role or that also plays a very, very crucial role we need to understand. So it is the cultural change. It is more about more than the technology and more than the business. It is a cultural change. And believe me, many transformations have failed because people have outrightly rejected them. It could not sustain itself. It could not get in the buy-in of the people because ultimately it is people like you and me who's going to use that solution. Even when you say that um, Robo is going to clean my house, at the end of the day, I'm the one who's going to push the button, right? Um, I'm the one who's going to have the button on the robot tri uh, triggered. And that time the robot will start cleaning my house. So your digital transformation, yes, you talk about those elements, but it is a cultural change which requires organization to continuously challenge the status, right? So digital transformation is not just about technology. It is about mindset. It is about strategy and it is about the new ways of thinking. So if you want to know more about this, uh, read this book, uh, The Digital Transformation by David L. Rogers. It is a good primer on what digital transformation is all about and what all elements of digital transformation does it have, right? Um, how how um, culture also plays a very, very vital role and how culture also shapes in um, making your digital transformation fly through it. Or it can also make any strong digital transformation fail miserably. So culture, mindset, and people, they are also equally important in this uh, story of digital transformation. All right. So let us understand this. Some key benefits of digital transformation. I think everyone knows about it. Um, anyone, anyone wants to quickly add what could be the return on investment or the benefits of digital transformation? The question is why? Why should I invest? Tomorrow, if a business leader asks you, why? Why do you think uh, you should be investing in digital transformation for any business? Any thoughts? Any anyone? What is what is the ROI of digital transformation? I'm sure there might be some benefits, right, uh, which could be coming out of um, investing in digital transformation. Anyone wants to add on that quickly? Just one or two pointers. Ease Why of doing, ease of doing, or mm -hmm. easy to accessible. Easy ease of doing business. Okay, fair enough. Customer reach. I can see it in the chat. Your There's customer experience as well. The customer but, experiences, yes. Again, I'm um, uh, listing it out um, in not a particular order. Increased revenue. Definitely, it will lead to an increased um, revenue, right? Because your channels open up. The entire world becomes your marketplace now, right? That is the increased um, revenue, what is there. So, um, uh, you'll be surprised to know that sitting in US, you can now order um, Pula Ready Suites. Uh, uh, did, did you know that in US, you can actually order Pula Ready Suites now, sitting in US? Okay, and it gets shipped to you in a very, very fresh condition. Not that the suite will be a damaged suite. It will be in a very, very fresh condition you can get. I think even this um, uh, Paradise Biryani, it is now, uh, of course, they now have a store in Dubai. So I don't know if that is supplying. But you can actually, um, that used to earlier, previously when the store was not there, they used to airlift uh, Paradise Biryani through the power of digital transformation. 
right? So that is increased revenue. You can actually open up more channels. Gone are the days where you only had um, uh, physical stores, right? Today we have multi-channel options uh, which are there. Okay, there are multi-channel, um, I would say, um, uh, utilities. And when I say multi-channel, it is not just my laptop. It could even be my uh, phone. It could even be any IoT devices which are there, right? So that's the increased revenue. Then, of course, the reduced cost. Yeah, you might be surprised by this. Because moment you tell a CIO or a CDO, a chief digital officer, that in order to move digital, you need to invest in infrastructure. You need to invest in cloud. You need to invest in high processing machines. That's where the resistance come from, comes from these leaders. So is it a reduced cost immediately? No. The reduced cost will happen over a period of time. So over a period of time, when your investments start um, yielding result, that is when your infrastructure cost is going to be apportioned over this entire timeline or this entire period. So that is a reduced cost of, of what we say, right? It's a reduction in the cost over a period of time, not immediately. Immediately, the cost will bump up. So the graph initially will be that if you want to invest in digital infrastructure, the cost will be higher. Slowly, it is going to fall down or slowly it will be balanced out um, over the period. Then improved customer satisfaction. I think people said this already. Sitting at home, I'm getting the luxury. So the other day uh, at 11 o'clock in the night, um, there was a urge, strong urge in my family to have an ice cream. All I had to do was to order the ice cream on Blinkit and um, the ice cream was delivered within 15 minutes. There was no store open the place where I stay at 11 o'clock, just to let you know. But whatever brand I wanted, it got delivered at home. Right, So it improves the overall customer satisfaction. And last but not the least, we have a lot of data which is getting generated. So a lot of data gets uh, generated um, as a part of this digital transformation. This gives a lot of insights, a lot of um, customer insights, a lot of uh, product insights, a lot of purchasing patterns, buying patterns. And this will help organizations to position their products in a better way. They can figure out which product is in high demand in which part of the zone or in which part of the city. And accordingly, they can stock it. Accordingly, they can make sure that deliveries happen at that time. I'm just giving one contextual example. But um, same thing applies for a banking app. Same thing applies for a credit card app. Or for that matter, a movie booking ticket. You can understand the patterns. Which shows of the movie, of a Telugu movie, or which shows of, uh, let's say, Marathi or a English movie are more um, popular, right? Um, based on the trends which are there. Since you have the entire data set available with you, that um, data analysis is something which helps you to achieve that. So th that is the power or that is what um, we say is the key power of your digital transformation, what is there. That's the power of your digital um, transformation journey, what is there. All right, moving ahead, let us, um, let us uh, further try to uh, um, go much more into the details of it. So um, as we move along, yes. Now let us understand what exactly is this pick way of the blueprint, the digital transformation blueprint of Pickway. Uh, this picture, um, as I said, uh, I gave a co-pilot an instruction that um, uh, tell me, show me a picture or generate a picture for me where a family is shopping, where a family is shopping. And it gave me this um, kind of a caricature. It's not a picture, it's a caricature. It drew your cartoon and gave it to me, Microsoft co-pilot. So maybe the prompt was not proper. If I would have said Indian family, it would have given a traditional Indian family um, going on a weekend for their shopping. Anyways, so let us understand the pick model or the pick way of digital transformation. As I said in the beginning, the most important thing in any digital transformation, whether it succeeds or not, is people. And believe me, people are the heart of your digital transformation. And as we know, uh, not, there is nothing new which I'm telling here. People resist digital transformation. And I think the reasons are pretty much obvious. Fear of change. Oh, what will happen to my job, right? Um, I used to start from my office back home at 5.30. Will I really be able to start from office at 5.30? That is a fear of change. Or just because we are implementing digital transformation, I will have to stay in office for one, one and a half hours more. People don't want to leave their comfort zone. No one wants to leave their comfort zone. I gave an example in the beginning, right? Um, I mean, Sunday morning, do, do I really want to give a webinar? I mean, I thought that that is a relaxed day, but that is my comfort zone because that was my comfort zone. But now I've come out of that comfort zone for today, right? So losing my comfort zone. And I'm very happy that uh, 47 of us are there in this webinar who have actually challenged our comfort zone and came out of it to learn something, right? So losing your comfort zone, job displacement. Uh, see, you might get an assurance from your company that your job won't go, but there could be a job displacement which could happen. What is job displacement? Your role might change. 
the kind of work you are doing might undergo a change and you may not want to do that um, at um, uh, especially after spending so much amount of time in your company you are happy in the current job role what you are there right um, so you might want to um, and you might not agree to this job displacement um, what is there. the same by, incidentally came up when um, indian railways did this um, uh, reservation by the way indian railways uh, is the first uh, official use case of digitization in india Anyone knows when was uh, a computerization of railway tickets introduced in India? The year, the year in which they did it. Anyone knows the year? If you remember the year when it was done, it is the first use case in Indian ecosystem uh, where digital transformation was done. 2004, no. You won't believe the year. It's not 2004. 2013, I'm talking about Indian railways. If you want to go from Hyderabad to Delhi, you want to book a Rajdhani ticket, you could go at a computerized reservation center and you could book a ticket. That is a digital transformation. It's 1985. Just check the history. 1985 was the first computerized. We were in fact one of the first, um, I believe, in Asia to do this. 1985, it was on a it was on a, a mainframe. This entire system was very robust on a mainframe. 1985 is when Indian Railways first launched a computerized reservation center in Delhi which allowed you to book between Delhi and Mumbai and Delhi and Chennai and Delhi and uh, Hyderabad. Only big cities were covered at that point in time. And return ticket was not there, of course. So you had to go at a, um, a respective station to book a return ticket. So imagine that's the, um, I mean, we had a vision. I'm not saying that our leaders did not have a vision. They figured it out that yes, uh, considering a population uh, challenge, this is something which will work. But then there was a huge job displacement which happened. The railway clerks who were using uh, physical registers to record the entries, had to now shift into a digital mode, right? So there's a huge job displacement which happened. Lot of things had to be unlearned. Lot of things had to be learned around it. So a typical survey which was done by this company Change First, they found that, um, you know what? You will always find that 21% of the people are going to resist any digital, digital transformation change. And out of this, 4% will be having open resistance. 8% will have some personal constraints. Then there will be organization constraints. Although that 54% might look a good number, it is not a good number. Those 54% people who are accepting this, they might be accepting because they don't want to, they are not vocal. They are not really vocal about to highlight their resistance to digital transformation. But it will somewhere reflect in the work which they do. So people, getting people along is the heart of your successful digital transformation. Only 25% people, this survey says, are really committed and they're bought in into the benefits of digital transformation. 11% of them are actively using that change. 14% of them actually own that change. They do give ideas. They do give suggestions around what can be improved. So that is the, uh, that is the kind of um, the digital transformation um, uh, challenge what we face, right? One of the biggest challenges um, what we face as a part of it. I remember we had done a project for a government organization we delivered this um, product to them and they said that after six months, we found out that no one is using that product. Because what they said was that, no, we are happy doing what we are doing. Why should I change? What is the benefit? What is the motivation for me? So one of these could be the reason. It could be a losing the comfort zone, the way I'm doing, let me continue. Fear of change. What would happen if I, um, if tomorrow this automates my work and my job becomes redundant, a job displacement and unlearned. So to talk about the people element, one of the important things to remember as a leader is we need to be a digitally literate. Um, we need to be a digital leadership skills is what we need to imbibe. So we have to make sure people are aware about the implications of digitization, the positives as well as negatives. As a leader, I will have to train them. As a leader, I will have to coach them. I will have to make sure that technology becomes their friend, not a foe or an enemy. The technology is not here to snatch our jobs. Technology is there to make our lives much more easier. And most importantly, highlight those benefits, tangible elements, intangible elements. Tangible elements could be that your um, a calculate, um, like in a bank, if I'm in a bank, my entire um, reconciliation can happen within minutes, if not seconds. I don't have to manually use a calculator to do it. So as a result of that, at the year end closing could happen very fast, right? Intangible benefit could be the better lifestyle. Right, better time with my family, better, um, I would say, focus on other important tasks rather than focusing on something which is manual and um, which is not interesting. I can actually increase my knowledge zone 
in another area which will help me grow in my career so you need to have digital uh, tech savvy leaders who are there who would motivate the teams who would inspire the team and who will make sure that the messaging is there even before you start digital transformation you will have to start doing it right uh, it's not a big bang approach as i said suddenly you cannot say that our digital transformation program has started you have to build the empathy you have to take people along with you as a leader otherwise your digital transformation initiative is going to falter miserably so people people becomes the p of the pick model and as a very famous african proverb says right if you want to go fast go alone but if you want to go far go together i think it's a very profound um, uh, proverb in this situation that you have to take um, everyone along with you right um, that is that is something very very vital and um, something uh, very very important here okay i'm not a spokesperson um, of our prime minister but um, his slogan right sabka saath sabka vikas sabka vishwas i think that applies for a digital leader okay i um, okay more than politics i'm taking that example for a digital leader's role sabka saath sabka vikas sabka vishwas i think that is what will uh, help our digital transformation run through it right or it will uh, make uh, some um, a lot of uh, benefits from a people point of view i obviously no prizes for guessing the next part of it i is the infrastructure and as you know right a digital transformation is a maze of so many things i'm not going into these things so many of you are already aware about uh, these infrastructure elements which are there but that if you ask me is the backbone of a successful digital transformation you cannot have a digital transformation without reliance on the infrastructure and it has to be a scalable infrastructure which is there right um, so so that's the scalability or that's the scalable piece what is there it's not that okay you're de devising or you're designing it for today's uh, customers you are actually imp um, imbibing the infrastructure for tomorrow's people which are which are there okay so so this is um, this is something um, what um, we need to remember here yeah this is something um, which we need to uh, understand as a part of this infrastructure what is there right the digital transformation infrastructure what we have uh, friends some um, are you all able to hear me just wanted to check am i audible to all of you yes okay yes. Are, okay i think i respond okay, so okay. someone was not able to hear us so i think i have responded i will check with okay her. yeah okay no problem all right so this um, this essentially is the critical part this essentially is the critical part which is there the infrastructure piece infrastructure acts as the backbone so along with people comes in the infrastructure element or the infrastructure what we need to uh, build and it has to be a robust uh, sustainable infrastructure now uh, what has infrastructure to do with this anyone knows this product by the way what is this product it's a pune product um, those of you um, who have come to pune know this what is this um, anyone knows this product uh, if you don't know okay i'll get it for you next time when i visit hyderabad so this is a very famous bakarwadi from pune okay. yeah. yeah so it is it is manufactured by a company called chitale so chitale is a dairy it's actually a dairy company and um, uh, i mean what has infrastructure to do with this i'm not talking about packaging infrastructure i'm not talking about food or storing infrastructure i'm not talking about um, the food um, uh, i would say um, the final packaging which goes through it or gift packs which comes to it so incidentally i came to know very recently and this was in news also that the best use case of devops if you want to go through the best use case of devops you will find in chitale dairy in fact i'm planning to visit them once okay so they have partnered with vmware to develop a cloud based infrastructure they call this project as grass to glass it's a cloud based program and they actually track the quality of their milk they actually track the quality of their raw materials Uh, to make sure that we build a good quality product ultimately the taste of a bakarwadi or a taste of a gulab jamun or a rasgulla depends to a great extent or rather to a maximum extent on the quality of the raw material in this case it could be milk in this case it could be the other ingredients which are there so they have a mechanism in place where their office in pune can actually track if a batch of um, gulab jamun has been rejected because of a poor quality milk or if the milk purity is a suspect so this is the kind of um, leverage technology they have invested into and i'm sure many um, food companies have done this this is just one example i gave which i know which i had read about it it's a classic use case of how containerization and uh, kubernetes they have used right to actually make sure that this information is available daily morning 
to the owner of Chitale that he or she comes to know how many batches have got rejected, how many samples have got rejected. They do a trend analysis that is there any particular category of milk which is getting rejected and if so, what could be the reason? So investing in infrastructure for your success of your digital transformation business. I think that is a key part of it. Now, I've, I've taken an example of a food industry. The same thing will apply for your banking industry. The same thing will apply for your movie business, as I said. So the important thing to remember here is the most powerful transformations are based on invisible scaffolds, right? A, a very profound statement, right? We just see the building. We just see, oh, it's a, such a beautiful building. But what is making that building a building? What is that backbone or what is that framework? That, um, if you ask me, is very, very important, right? That's hidden. Uh, people don't really take into account that. People just um, uh, give credits to the architect. But it's actually the structural engineer or the backbone who has built that robust infrastructure. I think that also needs to be given a credit on it, right? Um, so that is the infrastructure piece. C is the culture element. How do you define culture? I'm not um, uh, asking you to read that definition. How would you define culture um, of a city or a culture of a country? In a very, very, I would say, um, humorous manner, how would you define culture? That this is a culture of a city, this is a culture of, let us say, Pune, this is a culture of Hyderabad. How would you define it? Any, any, any guesses on that or any thoughts? What is the definition of culture? Uh, I mean, the standard definition of culture is there. Uh, so I, my, my okay, so my definition of culture is something which I do when no one is looking at me. That is a <laughs> culture. Okay, so if I'm following traffic signal, even when I know that there is no cop there, then it's a culture. Then it indicates that it's a good culture I have. But I only follow traffic rules when the cop is there. And I don't follow traffic rules when the cop is not there. That is not that is, that reflects something very poorly of the culture. Okay, so culture is something what you do when uh, no one is looking around you. Right. So that is a definition of a culture. And believe me, apart from people, we need people to have a strong culture or a strong affable culture for embracing digital technologies or digital transformation. So the mind plays a very, very important role. People is the heart and culture is the mind. OK, and the mind and the heart, as we know, they have to be coordinated with each other. Many times in life, we are in that dharam sankat, right? Should I listen to my mind? Should I listen to my heart or should I go with my heart, right? And especially people who would have proposed to a girl in their colleges would have had that dilemma. I'm pretty sure, right? Um, should I listen to my mind or should I listen to a heart what is there, right? Um, or vice versa, right? Girls who would have uh, proposed to a boy, something like that, right? They would have had that dilemma which is already there. So mind is very, very important, right? Now we used to always think that digital transformation means this kind of a culture, right? Where I can book tickets on... Um, the web, right? Um, in fact, I we don't even get a physical ticket now. We get a ticket on a, a WhatsApp nowadays, right? All you have to do is you have to show the ticket um, or scan that machine and the gates will open up for you. This is not a digital culture of India. Okay, if you think this is a digital culture of India, we all are wrongly mistaken. The way uh, we have seen India transform in last few years, this is the digital culture of India. And I think hats off to 1.4 billion people of this country that they have embraced a product which people actually were ridiculing earlier. That, no, this will never succeed in India. You saw in parliament, right? A lot of politicians were saying that uh, this is going to fail miserably. I'm not naming any politician here, but a lot of politicians said that how can a vegetable owner who sits on a roadside can actually do, um, can accept digital payment, right? There were all those uh, doubting Thomases who were there who were saying that um, this is not going to happen. This will never succeed in India. Today, even if you forget a wallet at home, I'm sure you are not going to have any problems. In fact, I once forgot my wallet at home. In the on my ride to to airport, I realized I have forgotten my wallet, and then I thought that should I really take the taxi back home and pick it up? I said no. Let's go like that. Let's see what happens. And I could actually enter into the airport. I could actually spend the money um, through QR code. I could actually survive for two days. Came back home without um, spending a single rupee from my pocket. That's the kind of transformation we have brought in this country, right? And as I said, this is uh, not to any politician. This is not to any leader. This is to the 1.4 billion people of India. They have embraced this culture. They have taken a stand that, yes, this is something what works for us, whether it is a housewife, whether it's a, a professional, whether it's a vegetable sell a seller, whether it's a, a restaurant, they have embraced this technology 
um, and that's the power of people. That is the power of people, what we say, right? I mean, that is where digital transformation has succeeded um, very much in India. It's a, in fact a use case for many of the Western countries that how even, um, even the, there was a joke, I mean, there was a wedding which was happening and there was this person who was beating a dole and on the dole he had a QR code, right? Um, and so whosoever wanted to donate to, to him for his dole, you could actually do a donation for that, right? So that's the kind of uh, transformation we have brought, 1.4 billion people. And I always believe that Indian people are the most creative people in this world, right? Um, you give us a technology, we will use it as per our unique requirements, as per our unique needs. So culture, um, very, very vital for a success. And if you see the equation of culture, it is people plus technology plus domain. Those three things element um, is basically those three elements essentially con contribute to your digital culture, right? Any one circle missing, your entire digital culture is going to collapse. Imagine people would not have accepted UPI. The business would have come, PTMs would have come, technology is there. But if people are not accepting, your digital transformation will go in for a toss. People want a, a, a thing. There's a technology, but the business is not accepting. There is no PTM. There is no, let us say, phone pay. There is no, let us say, UPI then obviously also it will fail, right? And um, just having technology and business without people is also a problem. Just having people and business without a technology in place is also a problem. So culture is the mind. Culture is the mindset. Until and unless you change the mindset, any digital transformation is not going to succeed. So uh, what do you mean by culture? I think this is a very famous quote, which we all have read. Culture eats strategy for breakfast. So that's, um, that's the quote we need to remember, right? However um, good strategy you might make, if the people of the um, if the if people or the users are not going to accept it, that product or a service is going to fail miserably, right? So however um, uh, you make a great strategy, however of these consulting companies make a strategy, culture is ultimately going to decide whether it will succeed or not, right? Culture eats a strategy for breakfast, a very famous quote by Pete Drucker. All right. The last part um, of my the, the pick model, the K, knowledge. K stands for knowledge. And when we talk about knowledge, it is not just the knowledge um, which we are trying to get in last, uh, I think, 50 minutes now. I'm speaking almost for 50 minutes now. So it's not that knowledge. That is what we call as an explicit knowledge that you can easily get. You can attend webinars like this. You can read a book. You can go through a presentation. You can go through a literature review. You can go through a training, training intervention, etc. So all those things, um, you can get it through those elements. What is more important for digital transformation to succeed is tacit knowledge. Now, tacit knowledge is also called as hidden knowledge. Okay, so I'll give a very interesting example from my um, days when I started uh, my journey in the IT world. Um, it, was, um, it was in the era of Windows 95. Okay, don't guess my age from that. Please don't try to guess the age from that. But um, Windows 95 was the first operating system I started my career with. And you know what? Um, I only ha I only knew one way of doing a, um, uh, doing a copy paste. I only knew one way of doing a copy paste, which is drag the folder from one window and place it into another folder. Okay, that was the only way I knew it. Okay, and then I used to do right click. I remember I used to do right click and say copy and then go there and right click paste. And then I saw one of my colleagues he was doing it um, very fast. And then I was wondering, how is he doing? When I asked him, he did not tell me. Okay, he did not tell me how is he doing. So what I started doing, I started observing him. And then I realized that he's pressing some C and a V key. And then I realized that he's doing Control-C, Control-V. That, um, that is how my story of Control-C, Control-V is. I'm sure each one of us has our unique stories. My uh, story of Control-C, Control-V copy-paste is um, this story. When I saw, that is what is tacit knowledge. Tacit knowledge is a hidden knowledge. And many times people don't share that knowledge. You have to really observe people very carefully. You have to shadow them. You have to clone their patterns. You have to understand how they are working, how they are reacting. So that is what comes in tacit knowledge. So as far as digital transformation is concerned, uh, what you see on the surface of this iceberg is a very, very, I would say, just a tip of an iceberg, what is there, what you have. But the real knowledge is hidden knowledge. It is beneath that big iceberg or that big landmass of iceberg, which is there, which is there waiting to be explored, which is waiting to be extracted. And how you can get that? You can get that through powerful questioning, probing, observation, conversations, ask people about how you have done it, 
that is when that knowledge will come out right one of the other experiences i have shot a video also of this it is on my channel is about the experiences we had when we were dealing, dealing with a government client a banking government client this person was refusing to share the requirements again for the fear of losing job we actually caught hold of the bank customers outside the bank we actually treated them for a chai and a biscuit and we said that okay tell us what do you do when you go into the branch what do you interact with or whom do you interact with then they said that we get a uh, blue color form what do you do can you get a copy of that blue color form we actually did a photocopy of that blue color form and that is how the solution was designed for this bank so those kind of techniques and tools we have to apply to extract the knowledge people are not going to say people will only say that i'm happy i'm doing what 90% of the time when you go for a digital transformation project people will say we are happy what we are doing why do you want to change it is when you do probing it is when you do experiential learning with them shadowing with them that is when they are going to open up that is when they are going to give you a subtle hint you as a digital transformation leader will have to catch that subtle hint which comes out right so knowledge just having knowledge is not of no value as um, the quote says right unless you put into practice unless you leverage the power of knowledge that is when it is going to give you that result what is there so just don't focus on explicit knowledge also focus on hidden knowledge or what is popularly known as the tacit knowledge what is there so that um, in a nutshell is the pick way of a uh, digital transformation for you uh, pick is people as i said uh, very important in today's world infrastructure uh, backbone then um, culture which is the mind and knowledge what is knowledge by the way uh, knowledge is the brain knowledge is where the brain resides so the four critical elements which takes place some um, into the digital transformation study i'm sharing some pictures uh, which i experienced myself um, rajdhani uh, forget rajdhani express now any train you go there is no physical um, reservation chart tcs have this uh, digital device they do your entire verification whether you are a genuine passenger or not on this uh, device which is and it's a real time device tsrtc if you see this uh, telangana government state road transport corporation they have incorporated with this app which is there right where you can book bus tickets and of course some um, the city where i work mumbai it has got a uts app um, it has got a chalo app also by the way there is a chalo app for buses also um, all i need to do is uh, book my tickets on this and i can safely enter into a local train and go to my destination so these are some real time use cases of digital transformation which are impacting 1.4 billion people of this uh, country in some form or the other so on this note um, i take a departure from you departure from this webinar of course i am available for any questions any thoughts around it uh, these are my coordinates if you would like to connect with me on linkedin and further take ahead the conversation happy to go ahead and um, uh, take this conversation ahead and uh, i hope uh, organizers that i was well within the time um, of uh, completing this but again open for any questions or your thoughts and feedback on this so over to the organizers uh, for taking it over from here thanks thanks once again for providing me an opportunity yeah any questions we can take here if anyone has a question any questions anyone has uh, uh, ashtosh one thing so while the transformation on a happy path uh, is all good but mm -hmm. if at all uh, there are some failures how to you know uh, uh, retrospect back and then how to handle failures obviously yes it's um, uh, it won't be a rosy path okay there will be lot of failures in fact there will be lot of um, uh, i would say slumber moments in this entire journey uh again um, that's where the leadership plays a very very crucial role is the leadership invested in failure i always say this are they invested in only successes or are they invested in failure also so it's more again on the cultural element which is there that's where the digital transformation layer um, leader has to protect the team he has to give a impression about the team to his leadership team the cio and the cxo that um, he has to alert them that it won't be a rosy thing that uh, everything will be uh, hunky dory from day one uh it is going to be a kind of a roller coaster right i always say that digital transformation works like a tick mark the journey of a leadership a digital transformation is like a tick mark any idea what what i'm meaning by that tick mark when i say that the leader a digital transformation story always goes in a tick mark fashion any guesses what it could be okay let me show you 
let me show you. So I'm sharing my screen here. So if I take digital transformation um, on the X axis is the duration and on the Y axis is the time um, and uh, the, uh, the transformation, uh, you might be here today. Today, you might be here from a business maturity perspective. This is the zone where you are. So on X axis is the time, what you have. And on Y axis is the maturity um, or the uh, maturity of the processes, what are there. You might be here, but when you are implementing digital transformation, it will usually follow a tick mark. First, it will come down a little bit. Okay. And from there, it will go up like this. That is the power of digital transformation. But leadership has to be invested into this. This is where you need a support from leadership that you cannot expect that digital transformation means everything will be on top on daily basis. No, it will initially falter down a little bit and then you take a jump. As they say, right? I mean, tiger, when um, the tiger is attacking the prey, the first two steps are always backwards. And from backward, the tiger will jump, leap forward and attack the prey. That exactly is the journey what um, you will have to go ahead and do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Ashish. Uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which change manage which change management model works best for this digital transformation? So when you say How change we... model model model, what what exactly do you mean by that? Um, a change management model when you're saying? Yeah, John. Uh, John Carter. Uh, change management model is there. So how can we best utilize such kind of uh, change management models? while transforming from our uh, old style to the new style. See, again, there is no particular model which um, I would recommend here. It's at the end of the day, what suits you, right? What helps for you or what suits you? You'll have to contextualize it and use it. See, I always believe that models are something which are given more as a guidance. You decide um, which one elements of those models to be used, right? Um, there are so many models around, right? As you said, right? Um, the Ross Cotter um, change management model is there. Then there is the Prosky change model also, which is there. Ultimately, it what works for you, right? What works for you is what uh, you will have to pick and choose. So yes, there could be some degree of um, experimentation, uh, which you would like to do here and then decide which of the model is working for you. Okay. So all these experimentations comes in the initial uh, yes. drop down. Yes, graph, that initial right? drop down, what is there? Yes. Uh, yeah, Sanju, go ahead. What's your question? I think I see a hand raised, Sanju. Hi, hi, uh, Ashutosh. I had a question uh, that uh, uh, who is uh, exactly responsible for ensuring the digital transformation? Is it this part of a PMO or is it to be incorporated in a team? And the second question is, how do I ensure the uh, pick method is involved in the project? Is it part of the KPIs? or we can add it in the form of the requirements. Can you please uh, help in that? Okay, so first of all, um, every organization now has got a, a digital leader. Um, we have a chief digital officer or a digital transformation leader. Uh, this person is the person who's accountable for the digital transformation rollout. This pick model is predominantly he or she will have to implement that model. So it's the chief digital leader or the chief digital transformation officer who leads the digital transformation across the organization. And then, of course, um, he or she will have a team of people under him or her, the technology transformation team, the process transformation team, the people transformation team. Those will be um, below this particular digital transformation leader. It is better to have them directly reporting to them. Now, of course, you could have a matrix kind of an organization structure also, where these technology leaders, process leaders, and business leaders have got a dual reporting. But um, the driver, the critical driver or the piece of this will go through the um, chief digital transformation officer. That's the role which is there in the organization. Okay, thank you, Ashutosh. Yeah, no problem. Okay, uh, so one thing interesting you would have found um, in my webinar last one hour. What was that? Any guesses if you would have observed me closely speaking? If you would have seen me very carefully observed me, uh, what I was speaking? No, I think uh, probably the culture ones, you are giving more uh, examples related to... Uh, no, what is, this, uh, what is this seminar about? What is the title of this series? 
which um, hyderabad chapter has issued sorry navigating the digital transformation no 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 i am not asking the title of my seminar i am asking the title of the series number 3 is it number 3 yes. and i did not use an agile word for last one hour now i am using it you would have observed that i did not use an agile word in my entire conversation you might be wondering why i mean someone might tomorrow give a feedback oh i thought it was an agile series but the instructor or the the person who was talking did not even use the word agile except last 5 minutes where he admitted where the instructor where the webinar um, uh, person admitted that he did not use the word agile so what do you think why why no why i did not use it or what could be the reason i have completely ignored the agile word is it because uh, agile has lost its prominence no agile is there okay i'm not saying that agile is not there but agile is just one small piece in this entire ecosystem i think that is what we as coaches scrum masters need to understand that um, at the end of the day business doesn't care whether you are using agile whether you are using waterfall or whether you are using hybrid what business cares is what benefits you gave to me so whether you tell your business that i am using a, a pi planning meeting or whether i am using a daily scrum it doesn't bother to the business at the end of the day the business is more concerned about the value which your solution is delivering and it can be delivered with an agile way it can even be delivered with um, uh, customizing the agile way of working or making it more like an hybrid approach so that is where um, the real power comes in right so so i think um, it's high time we start talking in the language of business we should be dealing with our business and we should be uh, interacting with our business in the language which they understand and believe me agile they may not understand it completely if you tell them i did it in pi planning they will ask they might even ask you what is pi planning okay or they might ask you what is a daily scrum tell me that right but if you tell them that yes we are having a continuous feedback loop we are having a frequent demo we are having a frequent um, uh, mechanism by which we take into account what is going on in the project what things are going and this is how our initiatives have yielded to the business this is how those initiatives have benefited the business that is a language which they will understand that's the correct language um, which they will understand um, as a part of this narrative what you said so it is all about setting the narrative how you set the narrative is also very very important what is there okay yeah any any other questions some um, any other query yeah i think uh, we are almost at the end of the session but still if there are any questions hi ashutosh mm -hmm. uh, this is rajesh so yes. i i would like to understand the thin line between uh, emotional touch between uh, transformation happening in re retail domains something like that for example if you take an scenario you we talk about transformation right so digital transformation transformation where you can order different foods from mm -hmm. uh, vendors available from either from usa within hyderabad something but the local touch where i see a lot of discussion even my local my relatives who says that we are you are missing that emotional touch right even uh, during this festival seasons uh, people support you like when you mm. support local vendors uh, you have that emotional touch of your neighbors Perfect. even when you see that uh, local people when i was young my i used to know my neighbors continuously Mm -hmm. where we don't have transformation but now being in an apartment of any any apartments you take or cities like hyderabad or local towns or wherever you go you miss that local uh, yeah, emotional touch so there's a thin line between these things right and uh, again when it, when we talk about my second question is uh, the amount of transformation going beyond the limits for example you see mode of uh, utilizing of wifi bluetooth which is uh, which is uh, sometimes it may be a thin line right how much where you, where exactly you want to exactly. use exactly you don't want to use i got your question i got your question so that's actually a title of my another webinar on which i'm preparing uh, i'm calling it as a digital debt over digitization is also a problem remember that if you over digitize anything that is also going to create lot of trouble as you said right it is going to increase um, it is going to increase or it is going to uh, increase the social divide uh, between the people that could happen it would also remove that human touch um, what we have been used to it so yes um, i mean that probably is the title of my next webinar which i am planning to do uh, i am calling it um, roughly along the lines of over digitization um, i mean the, as said there is no boundary i mean we only as human beings will have to set a boundary around it 
right? That yes, I'm not going to use WhatsApp for maybe a, a one hour, at least uh, every alternate days. I'll keep a digital, that is what is also called as digital detox, as we say, right? You are going away from the digital world, what is there? So many people do that, yes, because over digitization is a problem because it leads to a lack of emotional connect, lack of uh, trust, right, building up. So that's, a, as I said, that's not a topic which I thought I will talk about it today. But um, yes, that's a good point, but nevertheless, but it's more, um, I mean, just wait for another of my webinar on that coming up shortly, because I'm definitely preparing on that also. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I think we are almost um, out of time and I'm to, I, it's almost 11, 8. I don't want to keep you all away from your family and the work of what you have. So thanks. Thanks once again, everyone. If you have any questions, uh, please reach out yeah. to me so on the, yeah, uh, on the, uh, on LinkedIn. And yeah, I think someone was trying to say something. Okay, so thanks, no, thanks, no, every no, PCC yeah, thanks everyone. Uh, I hand over back to the P, uh, PMI PCC coordinator. Yeah, please take it over from here. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Astos. I think it's a great session. I mean, I also lost time uh, was looking at the time. I was looking at the questions. I just saw that the questions people have already posted. But anyways, you have already answered them. And great session. Uh, I will try to uh, follow, follow the pick way. Uh, I'm also in the same profession, so I, I correlate and I'm sure all of us have some something to take away from this and believe at least the books you have referred because I come from the explicit base, not from the implicit, but I think real examples, great session. Thank you, Asutos. Thank you, everyone. And if you still want to have any questions, uh, please put the questions in the Telegram group. We will try to answer them. Thank you, everyone, and see you in the next session. Thank you. Thank, thank you thanks, all. Sir. Thank you, Ashutosh. Thank, 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 thank you, Ashutosh. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.